Now, at what point in time would you say you ended up meeting Toker? Uh, I met Tokes maybe five years ago, and it was through, um, they're part of Crime Family Entertainment now, a uh, criminal's label or whatever, and they go by the Empire Riders. It was uh, Big Sanch who had hooked me up with Toker's cousin. Uh, he called him One Punch if you ever saw the lives or whatever, and uh, the homie Luis or whatever. So he called me one day, he was like, yo, I'm going to plug you in with Tokes from the brown side. I had never heard of Tokes from the Brown Side because I didn't, like I said, I listened to fucking Dr. Dre, nothing but a G thing was my first shit. Tokes was out about that same time. Yeah. He would have been on Easy Side, Dr. You know what I mean? So yeah. I wasn't privy to all that bullshit. That was a tiny bit before my time, before my musical time, at least, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so I was like, oh, okay, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I gave him the price. He was like, okay, well, do you have a problem going across the border? I was like, we're good, right? He was like, yeah, we're good. I was like, well, fuck it. If you're saying we're good, we're good. So, excuse me. He uh, told me, meet me at the last gas station off of the fucking 5 Freeway or whatever. And I was like, cool, whatever. He's like, I'll be wearing a cowboy hat. I was like, cool, I got you. So, I pull up down there and I'm looking for some fool in a fucking, he's like, I'm in a pickup truck. So, I'm like, all right, I'm looking for a paisano ass homie. I'm like, all right. So, I'm looking for a pickup with a homie with a sombrero. And I'm like, I call him like, yo, where the fuck are you at, fool? He's like, Dick, I'm right here looking at you in my pickup with a cowboy hat on. And I look and he's wearing a fucking Dallas Cowboys hat. I was like, fuck. So we cross the border. We go over there. My first encounter with a toker. There's beach houses. We're all in beach houses right there. So the beach house, one is more like a family house where you could have your kids and your wife or whatever. I went across the street to to one punches. You to do the voice. To, nah, I don't, I don't feel like it right now. So anyway, so fucking, um, we're going, I go in, I'll do the voice, fuck it, because I always do impression of Toker, so when I go, he's like, what up, big dog, come on in, so I go inside, and there's this crazy fucking whore right there, and when crazy, I mean like, super big old titties, big old ass, she's kind of like, just right there with her lady, she's just posting, he's like, this is all you, big dog, your lady's across the street, right, ponle, and I looked at him like, Fool, what if she comes? You're going to get me fucking caught up. Don't trip, doggy. My wife's over there. She got you. And I laughed it off. And he was like, <laughs> he made her spread her legs and shit. He was like, that's all you. And I was like, <laughs> I just laughed. Probably how I laugh right now. And I was like, nah, that's all you, Lewis. And he's like, you don't got to tell me twice. And that was my first encounter with Toker. Oh, and then he paid me. He paid me quite a sizable amount of money. Um, in that instance right after that it's like you don't want the pussy just the money all right here you go and then uh there was a restaurant down the down the street like literally like from here to where my car is okay and uh so i guess i was not down the street just a couple of buildings and fucking um we had an open tab well i had an open tab just had to pay for your own alcohol and i didn't really drink then either so Took care of me. He was really okay. good. That's a boss ass motherfucker right there. Now, 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 now what did he, what did he pay you for? Would you uh, videos oh, strictly okay. videos? Videos. Okay. Well, videos and photos. Not really photos because I would just. I mean, we're filming already. Just what's it? I mean, just right. pop a couple real quick. Right. But yeah, okay. mostly videos. And, and how many videos did you end up filming for him? Excuse me. I don't know. A lot. Okay. I shot every single thing that they put out from when they came back out. Okay. So, Who, when did he come back? 2015, 2016, when he started putting out his new shit? Yeah, if I'm correct. I did every. I did all of that. Every. I started that YouTube page. Okay. Every single thing. Now, when you say every single thing, just him or the other group that he Everyone. Had? Everyone Brownside related. Okay, and can you give us a couple of those names for the people that may be wondering? Uh, so, the, obviously, there's original Brownside, which, of course, the homie Wicked, Tokes, their Brownside, uh, his little brother, Clever, um rich rich g you know what i'm saying right. you should have rich g on here he's more your fucking era as a matter of fact well I, I, <laughs> I don't like to give away uh who's gonna be here but let's just say that's good okay he deserves it he's a good man um the trece boys which are little danger and travi and chino chino i believe has uh, a hefty jail sense he's looking at that i believe he's innocent of but i mean shit whatever i'm not the judge right so right and uh lady benz can't forget about lady benz okay and i shot every single one of their videos as well up until two years ago and i think the only person that's been putting out stuff lately is little danger more power to him by the way you know what I'm so, no. 
And and um, shooting these videos, uh, you said you started the YouTube tape, YouTube page. You guys are releasing through YouTube. Yes, of course. Or not. He amassed many many subscribers. I don't know. Maybe it might be at two hundred k by now. Yeah, yeah. I'm out of the fold on that because once Stoker passed away, I I quit. You know what I'm saying? Right. No disrespect to any of the homies. I reached out to everyone individually prior to me quitting. Right. They said it was cool. Only one person said it would look whack because he had just passed away and it might look like some bitch shit. But I was like. If anyone needs to test it, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. Right. No one's bitching out. It's just... you just true. I abandoned... Okay, so I put out an album uh -huh. through Brownside. Okay. Or Easttown Records, whatever you want to call it. We all claimed a Brownside, you know what I'm saying? At that point, it was more just like a flagship scenario as opposed to being actual... Being member of the group, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I had released an album called The Cost of Living, and I... I had just released it. We did an amazing show at the Brownside flagship store in downtown uh, Los Angeles or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like 300 people. Shit was leaking into the streets. It was great. And uh, a couple months after, he passed away, bro. And I didn't want to capitalize on all the attention because yeah. all of our followers went up. All of our profile views went up. All of the video views went up. And maybe, maybe from a marketing standpoint, I made a huge mistake, but out of an integrity and honor standpoint from my homie, I did the right thing by not trying to fucking capitalize and release a new music video in the middle of all of us mourning, per se, you know what I'm saying? So right. I just took a back seat to that, and after that, I just didn't feel like I needed to be part of the record label as a rapper, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm not going to fuck, I wasn't going to rap during right. that time, so... Right. Uh, um, how was your relationship with him? Was it, was it just, uh, I mean, can you call him anytime just shoot the shit with them? He was one of the groomsmen in my wedding, as an example. So that was my dog. We talked every single day, twice a day. Once in the morning, if it was a business thing, we would start off as business and me and him are shit talkers. I definitely like to talk a gang of shit. If we were fucking gossiping or whatever the case may have been, just talking shit, period. Talking about the baby, talking about this, talking about that. Yeah. That was my boy. That was the homie, yeah. like in a real ass way. I would go over there for non-work related things, just to chill, etc. We spent holidays together, all of our families and shit. So that's awesome, man. That that's was the homie. Good. That's good to hear. A lot of people were interested in to hear that. Um, now let me ask you a question. It's very hard for me to ask, but I need to ask. Where were you when you found out of him, you know, passing away? The day that it happened, um, I was filming a video for jokes. He was the newest artist put onto the team or whatever. It was me, Jokes, and Thravi. We were at my house filming the video Boss Bitch. It was like the fucking 10th day of filming because Tokes wanted more and more shit and more shit. Right. And like I said, fucking, um, he called Jokes or Thravi to fucking make sure we were doing whatever we were supposed to be doing and what have you. And uh -huh. fucking, um, I was just talking shit, saying you're never going to get your video. Fuck that, blah, blah, blah. Why the fuck are you even checking up on us? I don't even fucking need your help. It's not like you're doing anything anyways. Bro. I talk stupid shit to him. Just talking shit, though. You know what I mean? It was all in good uh -huh. fun. He was like, man, shut the fuck up for these fools jump you. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like, we fucked around a lot. And um, that was like at 1 or 2 in the afternoon. Come to find out later, everything had happened around 5. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, I didn't know that. So the homie... Luis, one punch, was blowing up my phone in the middle of the night. Maybe not blowing it up. He called two or three times. And I, I was asleep. And my phone's on silent at all times. So if my phone glows on camera, you guys know I never answer my phone, right? So there's that, right? So fucking, um, I woke up and I called him like, yo, it's cracking. Who the fuck you call me so late at night? He was like, they got the homie, dog. They got the homie. And I was like, go bail him out. What the fuck? I've never seen... One of the videos, how about this? One of the videos that I filmed for Tokes, you know people use prop money in videos now, right? Right. They, they don't even have that amount of prop money. So he had the most amount of money I've ever seen in my life in person, in a video. So when I say bail him out, I literally mean like, the fuck, bail him out. It's light. Right. It's fucking Mexico, you know what I'm saying? Bail that fool out. How did he not pay off the fucking... He was like, they got the homie. You don't understand. They got the homie. He was at my house 45 minutes later, and he lived at least an hour away. You know what I'm saying? So he flew to my house. He told me, and I was like, shut the fuck up, stupid. Like, I don't even believe. I don't, I don't even know why you're playing like this. Like, what do you really want? Where are we going? What are we doing? And he wasn't fucking around, so. You just had a hard time consuming that. At first, yeah. And then, I mean, it was true. Then I saw a news report. Then I saw a photo. 
a pretty fucking wild photo or whatever and you know what I'm saying? Well, if you hang out with someone every day and you see a particular photo and you see what they're wearing, you know it's them. Like, oh, you know what I mean? So, right. Okay. That's crazy. All good, brother. Thank you for sharing that. Um, that's the first time I ever hear somebody ever mention a photo. But we're going to go ahead and uh, stop it there. And we're going to take a 10 minute break and we're going to come right back and then we're going to talk about everybody that you've been shooting ever since. Let's do it. Mm-hmm.